my name is Tracy and I'm going to read Bubba the Cowboy Prince. Once, a strapping young feller named Bubba lived on a ranch with his wicked stepdaddy and his hateful and lazy stepbrothers, Dwayne and Milton. Bubba's stepdaddy spoiled Dwayne and Milton to no end, but Bubba worked from sunup to sundown doing chores of three ranch hands. Bubba never complained, though. He loved ranching. Dwayne and Milton spent their days setting on horseback, bossing Bubba around. Get them doggies along there, Bubba, ordered Dwayne. Yeah, and watch out for them cow patties, added Milton. You know how Daddy hates for you to track up the house. Now, Ms. Lurleen, who lived down the road apiece, was the purtiest and richest gal in the county. She owned the biggest spread west of Brazos, and she loved ranching, too. But it was lonesome work, and after a while, she decided it was time for some companionship. I aim to find myself a feller, she said, one who loves ranching as much as I do, and it wouldn't hurt if he was as cute as a cow's ear either. Ms. Lurleen decided to throw a ball. She sent invitations to all the ranchers in Texas. Soon, the day of the ball arrived. Milton and Duane spent all day getting guzzied up in their finest studs. Bubba about ran himself ragged waiting on them. Bubba, shouted Duane, fetch my bowler tie. Bubba, shouted Milton, get my boots polished. Bubba, shouted his wicked stepdaddy, brush them horses and wash that wagon. By the time Duane and Milton and their wicked daddy were ready to go, Bubba was exhausted. Still, as they climbed into the wagon, Bubba asked, Can't you wait for me to get ready? I want to dance with Ms. Lurleen, too. Duane and Milton and their wicked daddy hooted and hollered. Why, you're sawyer than a steer in a stockyard, said Duane. Can you imagine Ms. Lurleen dancing with the likes of you, added Milton? Ms. Lurleen wouldn't even wipe the dirt clods off her boots with that raggedy shirt of yours, and you smell more like the cattle than cattle do. Bubba took a look at himself. It was true. He didn't have a decent shirt to wear. His boots were downright disgraceful, and he did smell a bit rough. Milton and Duane were right. Ms. Lurleen wouldn't dance with the likes of him. Bubba hung his head. He felt lower than a rattlesnake in a gully. Milton and Duane and their wicked daddy went on off to the ball. Bubba mounted his horse and headed for the pasture to check on the herd. The sky was getting darker than a black bull at midnight. It looked like a Texas thunderstorm was brewing. Bubba had just arrived at the cow pasture when a bolt of lightning struck, knocking him off his horse. Bubba was stunned for a moment, but when he picked himself up, he heard a voice. Go to the ball, Bubba, said the voice. Bubba looked around. No one was there except him and the cows. Now, Bubba figured he'd bonk the bejesus out of his bean because the voice was coming from a cow. She chewed her cud and for a moment, then said, I'm your fairy god cow, and I can help you go to the ball. Bubba sat up, rubbing his head. I'd like to go, Ms. God Cow, but shoot, I don't have a thing to wear. The fairy god cow swished her tail, and Bubba's raggedy clothes changed into the handsomest cowboy duds he'd ever laid his eyes on. His jeans were crisp, his boots were shiny, his shirt was dazzling, and his stenson was whiter than a new salt lick. Why, I look downright purdy, said Bubba. The fairy god cow swished her tail again, and a nearby steer turned into the most beautiful white stallion Bubba had ever seen. Now you go on off to the ball, Bubba, and have a good time dancing with Ms. Lurleen, but you best be home by midnight, because that's when the magic runs out. Yahoo, shouted Bubba as he jumped on the white horse and galloped off to the ball. When Bubba arrived, the hoedown was in full swing. But every time Ms. Lurleen finished a dance, she yawned. There goes another $10 Stenson on a five-cent head, she complained. Where are all the real cowboys? By the time it was Bubba's turn to dance with Ms. Lurleen, it was almost midnight. Soon as she saw Bubba, Ms. Lurleen's eyes lit up. Why, you're cute as a cow's ear, she said. Bubba blushed, then took Ms. Lurleen in his arms and started dancing. Dwayne and Milton turned purple with jealousy. Who is that dude? said Duane. I don't recollect seeing him before, but he looks a mite familiar, said Milton. Do something, said their wicked stepdaddy. That cowboy is winning Ms. Lurleen's heart. As it turned out, Milton and Duane didn't have to do a thing. 
because Bubba and Ms. Lurleen were in the middle of dosa doing when the clock struck midnight. Suddenly, Bubba's fine duds turned into the dirty rags he usually wore around the ranch. He looked sorry, and he smelled worse. What is that awful smell? asked Milton. Why, it's Bubba, shouted Dwayne. Bubba turned 14 shades of red, apologized to Ms. Lurleen, and ran out of the room. Wait, she yelled, chasing after him. But Bubba didn't wait. He jumped on his cow and lumbered off into the night. In the ruckus, he lost one of his dirty cowboy boots. Ms. Lurleen clasped it in her arms. This is the boot of a real cowboy and the man I want to marry, and I aim to find him. Ms. Lurleen went back inside, and though she asked everybody at the ball, nobody knew who the mysterious cowboy was. Nobody except Dwayne and Milton and their wicked daddy, that is, but they weren't talking. The next day, Ms. Lurleen went from ranch to ranch looking for the cowboy who owned the boot. When she asked Dwayne and Milton's ranch, both brothers tried the boot on, but it didn't fit. Ms. Lurleen had just climbed on her horse to leave when Bubba rode up. He was dirty and sweaty and smelly from working with the cows, and he was only wearing one boot. Ms. Lurleen jumped off her horse and ran over to Bubba. Try this on, she cried. Bubba Turk took the dirty old boot and put it, it on. Much obliged, ma'am, he said, blushing. It fit perfectly. You're my prince in cowboy boots, shouted Ms. Lurleen. I'd recognize that smell anywhere. Marry me, cowboy, and help me work my ranch. Dwayne and Milton and their wicked daddy threw chicken fit. But Bubba just smiled, and he and Ms. Lurleen rode off into the sunset. They lived happily ever after, roping and cowpoking, and getting them doggies along. The end.